Hello everybody, Steffi here from Room Makers and uh, you are here today to watch me make a little gnome, the little, the little gnome from the Making Fairy Folk book and uh, it's a great stash buster but of course if you um, need to get the materials they will be shouted out to you as I'm going along and um, if you're watching this live on the 20 6th of, um, no, is it the 26th? Yes, the 26th of um, July 2022. You will know that I've actually pre recorded this because I'm having my annual leave. So um, let's sit back and enjoy this. This also means that I won't be able to comment as I usually do on um, on any of your um, lovely comments. So um, apologies for that, but I will just plow my way through it. But I have got exciting things um, to share with you. Let's have a quick look at the book that um, you uh, might or might not have. It's definitely worth having. It's um, it. It's the newest book that I have written in um, during lockdown, actually, while sitting and enjoying uh, the sun um, in the Forest of Dean. And um, here is the little, or we call it the small gnome, actually. So I should stick to that, the small gnome. And um, it starts with um, the very similar technique to how the fairies are made. And um, of course, it's beautifully illustrated by Lucy Guerno. I, I'm going to give her a plug here because she makes these books just look so amazing. There's also a large gnome. He's actually quite a bit a bit larger. So I'm just going to show you the difference of the two gnomes. So we're making this one here, but there is a larger version. So if you into gnomes, then you will definitely love this book. And I definitely think we should do that large gnome as well. It's of course full of uh, fairies uh, because it's a it's uh, called fairy folk so you will find the fairies in there amongst other woodland creatures it's split into the four um, into the four different elements so it's um, earth water air and fire so they're um, they are segregated um, in, into these um, different um, elements so you've got fire here at the back with the fire salamander the flame fairy the fire fairy then you've got um, all the water um, creatures here, even um, quite a, 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 a very, um, what's the word, um, detailed frog, uh, a northern pool frog in fact. Uh, you've got a kingfisher here, we sell that as a kit. Um, you've got uh, then um, ice fairy and, um, and other creatures. Then we're going to fire, um, sorry, we're going to air with the sun fairy and the butterfly fairy. Um, wind sprite, rainbow fairy and the forget-me-not fairy. Some of those we have uh, featured as kids as well. This one is um, earth with the fawn in the woodland, um, then the small and the large gnome. Toadstool house that is actually a tutorial already on our um, YouTube channel so you can see that the acorn children, seed babies in a walnut shell, they're really tinsy tiny. And then uh, last but not least um, there is um, what is this now? I've forgotten now. Um, what have we not covered? There's a lot, a lot about Earth. I think then the um, have I done fire? Yes, we've done fire. We've done Earth and air. Yes, so it's basically Earth is big. I I'm definitely an Earth person, so there's a lot covered um, of the Earth in there. Right. Um, let's um, let's give it a go. So what you need is you need a paper covered um, wire, which is um, this one is um, 22 gauge, which is quite is the thickest probably there is. And then you also need um, some wool. Now there's more wool than you need, but I just grabbed a handful of everything that you um, you might ha um, have to have to hand. And uh, you've got, we've got our New Zealand um, dragon mix, which you never quite know how it turns out. You've got the flesh pink, which is the Australian merino. You've got our rainbow drops in green tiny little um, cotton drops in there. Um, I've got a, a grayer beard and a darker brown beard. That's the blue face Lester. It comes in different colors. The natural stone sheep, which is um, black with a little bit of a white fiber running through it. And our um, variegated red, um, and that is for the hat. Right, so the first thing you're going to do is, and I'm gonna show you this overhead here, you need to cut your wire into um, three equal parts. So this wire is 36 centimeters long and now I'm going to cut it 
um, into um, three 12 centimeter parts. And for those who hate me doing this, I'm using the scissors because I find that much easier. Right, I'm gonna cut 12 here, and then hopefully there'll be another two of the same length left. Here we go. That's my um, my three wire lengths um, of um, 12 centimeters each. What I will say is if you are using scissors, please use scissors that you will never ever use again for um, anything else. And the other thing that I am doing is I have covered my felting mat with a purple piece of felt so you can see better what I'm doing here um, as it's quite a small scale. So here's the little gnome, you can stay here and watch us. And um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the head and it's very similar to how you do the fairies. If you have made our fairies before, you need a little bit of the pink wool and begin wrapping it flat like a ribbon. So always turning it over around the ribbon, wrap the end, leaving about half a centimeter exposed. And then you bend the wire in. So now the wool is trapped, it's not coming out and the and I'm going to cover now the top, the, the end of that wire with the flesh pink wool. If you're making along, remember that this video will stay on YouTube and you can always watch it again if you are struggling to keep up. I am a fast crafter. And, um, and also, of course, you can always pause me even while, um, during a live um, streaming. So I'm adding more and more wool onto the end of this. The, the really important um, thing to notice or to, to remember is that you're keeping the wool flat and tight like a ribbon as if you're wrapping it really nice and tightly around the top. I'm holding my fingers here to stop the wool from slopping, s slipping along the wire. It's not slopping, it's not meant to slip. And then I'm using a felting needle. You can use a medium or a fine. I think a coarse one going into the Australian um, merino um, might might not work. It might just bounce off. However, if you're using the New Zealand merino flesh pink, you will be fine with a coarse needle to start out with um, first too. Right, I'm felting this little ball shape down, and I'm going to check in the in a minute in the book how big that head needs to be. So to make sure that I'm sticking to the instructions, which is always a challenge, because I look at the project and I think, oh yeah, I remember how I did that. And then um, inevitably I'm doing it slightly different. But that's the beauty of needle felting. Nothing's completely um, predestined how it needs to be done. There are many, many ways of getting to the same result. And um, if you like our ways, then you're in the right place. If you um, are watching right now then give us the thumbs up on this video that would be amazing and also remember to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any of the live streams and uh, what i normally do is which i've completely forgotten now and i'm going to do this straight away now because there'll be people waiting and saying oh you haven't done this oh you haven't done that and that is uh, normally at the beginning of every tutorial i'll tell you what price you can well you you can we know what price you can win but what you need to do to win the price it's a 15 pound gift voucher and what we want you to do is we want you to tell us um Let's have a look. I read it for earlier. Um, today's price, right. Giveaway. The gnomes are having their best holiday ever in the Forest of Dean. Tell us about your favourite holiday. What's your favourite holiday? Um, tell us about it. Hopefully you might still be in it. Who knows? It's uh, the middle of the holiday time here, certainly in, in the UK, British summertime. Um, and um, you might be in it. But think back of the holidays that you have got. Um, it under your belt already and tell us and then pop it into the comments that works today on the 26th of July at um, one o'clock over on YouTube and it works again at the repeat of the live stream on the 28th of uh, July which is the Thursday at 7 p.m. over on our Facebook page um, the makers Facebook page of course right sorry about this I didn't um, I completely forgot um, I'd be funny it will be funny how you all be uh, complaining Ah, oh, she hasn't told the price she hasn't told the price it's all here now right now small gnome head the head size needs to be about let's have a look um, two to two and a half centimeter in um, in diameter so I'm just going to measure that 
So I'm, I'm about two centimeters at the moment. Um, so I'm going to stab it down a little bit more to neaten it up. And then I'm going to put another layer of pink over the top, which we can do together. Here we go. So another layer of pink. So uh, remember, pop into the comments, what's your favorite holiday? Tell us about your favorite holiday. Um, also, if you are unable to comment, uh, certainly on YouTube, you have to be signed into your Google account. So otherwise, um, you won't be able to uh, comment on, um, on YouTube. Um, and, um, and also, you might have to just click a button where it says comments. So they don't not, they don't always necessarily come up. So you have a look underneath the video. If you, if you if it's not on a full screen, go reduce the screen and then just find the comment button. Click on there and then you should be able um, to comment. Certainly, if you're signed into your Google account. And um, and that's sort of uh, maybe what has stopped some of you commenting. I know many of you are watching and you're completely silent in the background and I very much appreciate that too of course that you are there. You don't need to um, always be in the forefront and uh, commenting. We love you being here even if we, we don't know you're there. Um, so we've just finished our summer retreat which was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm um, in the process of planning the next one. I have already got dates. It's the 20th to the 22nd of January, which is um, actually the winter retreat. I'm also planning the summer retreat next year, but uh, the dates I have not got confirmed yet. But uh, certainly the January uh, winter retreat, 20th to the 22nd, if you are interested, because you've seen some amazing photos of what people have done over the um, summer retreat and the winter retreat this year, then pop us an email, info at themakers.co.uk, and we will um, put you on the mailing list as soon as we've got details. We will send um, them out to you. We have actually decided to go back to the wilderness center for the winter retreat as well because um, people just really really want to come here in the winter too they just absolutely love it here and it'd be nice to see it in a different uh, time of the year as well however that means that rooms will only be available for sharing so you share it either with one other person or up to three other people and they are big rooms so it's not as if you um, have to literally sort of sleep side by side in touching distance in fact they're bunk beds so you could even sleep at the top Right, I've done my um, little head here now, which is um, the size that I want it to be. And now I'm going to make a little nose by scrunching up a bit of um, the pink wool. Can you see the Angelina fibers here? I've been doing the Moon Fairy recently and there's still Angelina fiber everywhere. Talking of which, our Moon Fairy is still a um, fairy box for July. So you, if you haven't got your hands on her yet, you can still get her. Um, so what you see me do now is I'm not very not very nicely putting um, a nose onto him. The reason why I say it's not very nicely because I'm not bothered about um, making it look um, like it's sort of joined up because in a minute I'm going to take, so it looks a bit strange, I'm going to take a bit of that leftover pink wool. I'm just going to put that over his face, put the wool over his face, haha, <laughs> over his eyes even. And um, I'm just felting that down so that the nose now becomes part of the overall shape of the face. And that way you don't need to um, give him special cosmetic surgery when you attach the nose. So the nose is now attached and it, it will look a lot nicer now that it's melting into the face rather than just looking like I've just stuck it on it. Here we are. Um, remember, there's going to be a lot of beard covering that face, so there's not um, a, an awful lot of um, detail or, or you don't need to be very, very um, precise. I'm actually now going to a smaller needle because um, this is getting felted down quite firmly and my needle be is beginning to bounce. So I've gone down a needle size. I'm now um, using, I'm actually using a medium twisted needle. If you don't know anything about twisted needles, they are, um, in general, I would say, always feel a little bit more like the size, um, a lower size. So a medium feels like a fine. But the nice thing is that it's actually quite efficient still at a medium needle, but it fits into the wool better because of the twisted um, end that the needle has got. So now I've got a gnome with a little, with a little nose here. 
and um, I'm going to um, continue on the instructions, which basically means I'm going to give him little eyes. So I need the tiniest wisp of black, and that's going on the side, just just slightly higher up than the nose, but sort of in line of it. So you want the eyes to be in the middle of the face, so the middle line going across the nose. There's one little black spot, and let's make the other one, tiny, tiny amount. The natural um, black, the, um, the stone sheep lamb, can sometimes have little irritating long fibers in there. You can just pull them out as you felt it on um, so that you don't have to put up with them. That one is definitely going to be bigger, so I've got to felt it down a lot more. It's always the challenge to get two sides to be exactly the same. So there's two options. You either felt it down until it's the same size as the other one, or you make the other one a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to just make the other one a tiny bit bigger, so he's got two same eyes. Felt that down. Right, two little black eyes there. There's a little face looking at you now. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare for the arms and the legs. But before I do this, um, ah, what was I talking about then that I wanted to mention again? Um, oh yes, Moon Fairy, that's it. So here's the Moon Fairy. She's still available as a, as a um, fairy box with our subscription boxes for fairies. You can either buy it as a one-off or you can get her as a, um, as a subscription. She's really lovely and um, sleepy. Now this one's lying down on the moon. You can also ha have her hanging from the center, but the moon fairy is definitely still up for grabs for the last few days of this month. So don't miss out on her. And um, equally, the dolphin, which is the maker's box, is still available too. Um, you can make him on this stand. It's quite solid. It teaches you really good, um, uh, a good technique about how to make uh, an animal on a stand or, or not doesn't have to be an animal and that technique is exclusive to those of you who subscribe and we will send you a link with um, the email um, link well an email with a link um, to a private um, YouTube tutorial and of course the surprise box our third subscription box is um, coastal paths that's um, that's still available too and um, hopefully you will have you will get a bit of a um, end of the month um, inside look into that too. But if you're very, very curious, then you can join our um, surprise um, spoiler group on Facebook. So just look up for the Makers Surprise Spoiler group. And I'm going to continue on my little gnome now. By now, you're probably going to tell us about these wonderful holidays that you have had. And I'm wondering what they're going to be because they don't have to be exotic and abroad. They can also be just at home and um, I don't know just just nice and nice and cozy at home so I am using the flesh pink now to make the hands same as I started with the head I'm now doing this with the arms so I make cover the end fold it in and now I'm going over the um, fold over the bent wire again but this time I've got to go along the wire. So before I build up the, the head, this time I'm going along the wire so that um, I'm making the arm. Now the arm, um, he, he won't have bare arms, so he will have um, another cover over going over this. So you don't need to be um, making the arms very, um, very built up because you can do that later with the other wool. Um, I am actually now run out of the pink, which um, is not what, I'm, what I had in mind. But I'm just going to grab some more, so just bear with me. Um, I'm still here, just going to get some pink. Okay. On we go. Yeah. How have you all been coping with this hot weather last week? That's maybe should have been the question. Um, I personally, I love it. I love it because um, I think um, I love clear seasons. I like it when it's cold in winter and hot in the summer, but um, I don't do very much. I don't 
exercise in the heat or anything like this. I'm, I'm not very good um, moving fast in the heat, let's put it this way. Right, there's a set of arms. The only thing that I'm concerned about is, is that the hands are neat. I'm not so worried about the bit in the middle because that's going to be covered with more wool. And then in a very similar way, um, as you've covered that up now, you're going to go over it with the green but leaving the hands exposed. So you can cover that a little bit more generous now, give him slightly um, bigger arms. As you can see, when you wrap wool in the opposite direction to the wool underneath, it unravels it. Now in this case it doesn't matter because I'm just going to squish it down by going over it and forcing it to um, to be to behave itself. But if you're doing this on a fairy or if you want the outer um, to look neat then um, you might have to just always uh, make sure that you wrap the wool in the same direction on top as you've wrapped it underneath and then uh, make sure that both arms are roughly the same thickness. Now this wool that I'm using is the um, green rainbow drops as I said and um, there I've got a set of arm, arms ready now. Now I'm going to do the legs and they have done slightly differently in that I'm covering um, the um, bit here with, um, uh, let's just have a look, am I missing wool here? That's, I seems to be missing that. Oh no, because I'm using the, that's right. You're actually using um, the lovely dragon mix. It looks quite brown on the picture, but it's not brown. It's this color. Nice, look at this, like a little autumn gnome. Um, so I'm starting by wrapping the wool. If this is really, really hard for you, there's nothing stopping you to put a dab of glue at the end. So just add a little bit of glue just here on the end, which will help you um, for the wool to grip and um, and then it doesn't like go back and forth and back and forth as you're wrapping it and that will just establish it so it doesn't it doesn't um, slide around and of course to speed things up you've seen me do it a minute ago just turn the whole thing around and um, twist it um, so that you twist the wire and let the wool slide through your finger. I'm always teasing it so that I've got even parts sliding through my fingers and I'm going over again because he needs much bigger legs than what he's got here at the moment. And again, even, even at this point, you can put um, a little bit of glue if you want to. There's nothing, absolutely nothing stopping you. Saves you felting it later. If it's nice and um, solid and it doesn't come off, just put glue over it. And the glue that we use, we love this this glue. Um, it's it's called Stick It, and you can buy it from our um, website. It's clear drying, so that's really good for us too, because we always need um, need this to be uh, invisible when it's dry. And um, lots of people love this glue, even people who are needle felting. There, there. Um, I can't remember who it was now. Somebody at the recent retreat said, um, I need to buy some of this glue for my husband. He does um, model work and uh, he uses it because it's way better than the glue that he normally uses. So I can't comment on the glue that he normally uses, but apparently this one's really good. Right, I've actually managed to go back and forth um, um, three times. So I've got a set of legs now with a wire sticking out on either end. And for this, I'm using the um, the black wool again, the natural black wool. And all I'm doing now is I'm covering the end as I did before when you started out with the head and the hands. And I'm doing also what I did before, bent the end in so that there is a bent, covered bent now. And I'm now cover, continue covering this a little bit more so that I'm going up the leg. But with this little um, fella, what we want is we want him to have pointy boots so I'm actually going a little bit longer um, than the wire to have that extra bit here is actually not um, in, hasn't got the wire inside. And I'm just going to felt that down. So when you felt this down, now I can take this off, you can see it better this way. Um, you will find that um, the, 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 the wire, if you hit it hard, it will bend. 
your needle. So try and avoid it. I'm not making terribly deep stabs because I also don't want to uh, push the wool straight out to the other side. But I am felting this little tip of the black wool into a little pointy, to a little pointy shoe. And I am bending the foot in. So now I've got a little um, a little pointy boot here, um, which you can felt a little bit more if you want to. So the, the tip of this boot is, is just wool. There's no wire in there. And that um, has made the leg a little bit longer as well. So it's a good tip if you um, have slightly short, too short a wire for the legs, just make the feet a bit longer. And then that makes the whole leg longer. Right. I've done that on one end. Now I've got to do it on the other end. A bit more wool. And go round. In a minute, I'm going to let you catch up. So this is covering the end. I'll tell you a few other exciting things that are happening here at the Makers. Some of them you um, you know already. Some of them um, are you might we might be able to add more details to it. So I'll do that in a minute. And um, I'm just trying to think what my best ever holiday was. Oh gosh, it's really hard to tell. I don't think I do like best ever. Everything has got its good, good moments. So I, I'm not sort of an, I don't talk in extremes. Because I, I, I always, you know, I always love every single fairy, but then I, I love, I love them when I do a new one. Then I always think, oh, that's the best one. But I know it's not going to be the best one because there'll be lots of, of good ones to follow. So I don't actually, I don't know if I've ever had an all time best holiday. As soon as I it, it pops into my head what I want to say is then I think oh no that doesn't that isn't make doesn't make justice to the others so I'd be interesting to see what um, defines your best holidays. Right, I think those feet are pointing in all in uh, all directions. Not in the right, not in the same one, but I can adjust that quite easily. Right, here we go. So now you're going to bend the legs in. So you've got um, a little set of legs. Oh, look, they look so similar to these. That's good. Except they're like bent like this. There you go. That's your, um, and, and if you see anything that's sort of uneven now, haven't seen them next to each other, then just adjust it. So I can, I can see that this boot shaft goes slightly higher than that. So you either felt it down or just add a tiny little bit of um, wool onto the other boots so you can even it out. That's the beauty about needle felting, that you've always got this chance of adjusting and um, amending as you go. Nothing's ever really quite finished until you're finished, until you declare it finished. There we go. That's better now. Yay. That's better. Right, so what I want to show you is, and I'm going to show it to you here under the camera um, coming in. I've been talking about Robin from Robin Robin, and here she is. She's coming, she's coming. There she is. This is Robin. Oh, she doesn't even fit into the screen. Just, ugh, I have to put this away, make her a bit lower. Sideways, maybe. There. This is Robin. Uh, from Robin Robin, the Artman animation, and uh, the makers are uh, licensed to make the kit for you to make her. She's big. She's quite big. I think when people saw her for the first time for real, they were quite surprised. I love this character in the film. You must go and watch the film. Um, and I have put, oh yes, so the kit has got lots, lots and lots of um, wool in there. But um, it will look like this. Um, you can pre-order it. Potentially, by the time you're watching this, you uh, can probably just order it straight from our website and we post it out. But um, you can make the whole character perfectly legitimately because we're licensed to, um, to sell the kit. And um, there she is. And if you haven't watched Robin Robin on Netflix, I urge you to go and see it. If nothing else, if you're lovely needle felting, it is, as far as I know, the only animation where all characters are needle felted. It's half hour long. It is, um, it's, it's around um, the Christmas time that it actually takes place, but it's the sweetest film ever. And uh, it has won um, 
um, prizes for the musical performance in there, and it was even nominated for an Oscar. So get your Robin kit. That's all I can say. Watch this space. This Robin you can watch too. And she does stand. She is actually standing. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna leave her there with her ears um, slightly showing. I wonder if I can put her a little bit back there. No, you see her eyes as well. She's just on the cusp of that cutting mat, so she doesn't like standing on the edge of it. Right, okay, we're here to do um, the gnome, but I can also show you, um, definitely can show you a um, thumbnail. So it's a brand new needle felting kit, pre-order now, collaboration between Artman and the makers, and uh, you get everything in your kit to make the robin. She is, um, oh gosh, I don't actually know how tall she is. She's quite tall. I would say she's probably about 20 plus centimeters tall, um, and um, um, the tools are in there as well and it's suitable for beginners. If you know somebody who loves um, the film and loves crafting, that is the perfect gift. You really, really don't need to look any further. Right, um, I'm going to continue on the gnome now, so I go back to the overview camera. So we've got a set of arms, we've got a set of legs and we've got um, the head with two eyes. Oh gosh, you can't see anything. Two eyes and a nose. And now we need to put this together. And to put it together, um, I'm going to, um, on on this occasion, this is different from what I do with the fairies, but I, as I say, there are different ways of doing it. I'm adding now the legs to the head um, wire first, and sort of a rule of thumb is that this bit here between the leg and the bottom of the head is the same size as the head, so you could almost fit another head in the middle, if, if you see what I mean. So I'm going round here and round here, so then I have got um, wire left at the top. Let's just see if I can go around one more time. Still got enough wire, yes. So now I've got um, the two wires that are running up here. Oh, you can't see that. Hang on, let me just get this purple sheet back. It makes so much more sense to see it on there. So now you can see I've gone round um, the legs here. There. And now I've come up, I've got the two wires just just short of hitting the head, this one wire, wire that's come up. I'm putting the arms into here and I'm trapping the arms in there now by twisting the wire. You might need pliers for this. It is quite a stiff wire. So then twist the whole wire so that the arms and the legs are trapped now. So they're all in there now. Everything's secure-ish anyway. And um, the next thing you're going to do is you're actually going to use the green wool. And um, um, are you using the green wool? Well, actually, it doesn't say that. But what I would do is I would just use um, the, a little bit of the green wool to just go in and out um, of the wire just to make sure the arms are really stable, especially if your wire end was a little bit shorter. Right, that will do for the arms now. And we're going to add more green onto the body later, but we're going to start by covering him with um, the um, dragon mix first. And you do this, going around the body like that. So you want to cover everything that looks like wire so you have to go between the legs and up and round. So cover everything that looks like wire and then go up the body too. And at some point when you're doing this, you'll end up with uh, the wool sort of not wanting to stick anymore, if that makes sense, or, or um, stay in place anymore. And then you, you will use your felting needle and you stab it down. So I've just noticed that my felting needle is actually bent. I'm going to use another one. It's too much stabbing into wire. So you're giving him almost sort of like a little, little jumpsuit, but with no arms. 
with no sleeves. And um, always gentle so that you avoid the wire. You don't want to stab straight into the wire because this is what happens. Your needle gets bent. Can you see there's a slight bend in it? And then there's nothing you can do. You can't unbend it, unfortunately. It will just go. And so he's now got his um, his lower body done. Looking quite proud here. He's got a little tummy look. Tiny little tummy there. Oh. I can take this off again because you can see better. By the way, this is our earth friendly felting mat. It has been used, but that's okay. We can it is there to be used, so I don't I'm not pretending that uh, we have everything always pristine. This is we are, you know, we are a work we 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 don't do kits to look nice. We do them because they're useful and you can use them. And now you're going to wrap wool around all of the upper body so you're covering in effect you're covering the um, the top up that you've just added in the New Zealand um, dragon mix. And you're adding more of that. And what you want to do is you want to go a little bit below where the legs are. So just add a, a loose layer around the bottom part and, um, and then felt down the upper body first. This. Going all around. So I'm just felting down the wool at the upper body. Remember, if you're interested in our retreats, send us an email, even if it's um it, it we do we run two retreats, one in January, one in July. They are usually um, we don't have more than 20 people on it. I think it's usually definitely less. I mean, this retreat we've just run, we had 18 people on it. Um, there are, um, there's plenty of help at hand. We, we help people who um, contact us and they say they might need help. That's absolutely fine. We don't mind lending you a hand um, if you've got any kind of worries or concerns. Sometimes there are physical restrictions. Sometimes it's because you're so new to needle felting that you're worried about um, achieving anything not that you need to be worried but um, I know it's easy to say don't worry just rounding off the base of that um, dress not dress but it's like a it's like a cloak isn't it like a what is it called what would you call it on a norm um, no idea you you come up with a name um, and so yes get in touch it's info at the makers.co.uk the um, the, the place um, at the wilderness, it is suitable for people who've got physical restrictions. We we found that um, we had a, um, a lovely, lovely mother and daughter um, who came with um, where, where both of them had uh, physical restrictions, but potentially one of them was um, wheelchair bound. And um, the, the great thing is that you can literally drive from the upstairs to the downstairs. I know that sounds really weird, but in, there is no um, that the the place itself has got wheelchair access, but you can't get from the upstairs to the downstairs inside the house. But you can drive <laughs> in the car from upstairs to downstairs. I know that sounds really weird, and they did it, and it was amazing. I just loved it, and uh, must have been feeling very strange to get in the car every morning and drive downstairs. <laughs> But we did it. It was, um, yeah, really pleased. Well, they did it. I did nothing. I just, I was just happy. Right, so now he's got, um, I've, I've made his little dress um, at the top so that it's sl slightly rounded and it overlaps the, the legs a little bit. He's got ginormous boots, but then gnomes have big feet. Surely they do. And um, and there you go. He's a little he's a little gnome, very bald at the moment. So we do need to give him um, all the other bits and pieces that he will need. I'll I'll give you a chance to catch up. Robin is still sitting here very patiently. This is where I am at now. So big feet. Um, he's got this lovely green um, dress or cloak or tunic. Tunic. How about tunic? 
And uh, the other thing I need to tell you about is that uh, we are still taking bookings for Joan Prowse's masterclass making a needle felted line. She has just made a lying down line, which is absolutely stunning too. Have a look on our Facebook page, themakers.co.uk, if you can't find us. Um, that's our Facebook handle, the makers with two ss.co.uk. And um, the two weekends that we're offering, so you, it's only for one weekend per, um, for a class, but we're offering two weekends for two separate groups, 10th to the 11th and the 17th to the 18th of September. And um, you need to have prior needle felting experience and it is a non-residential workshop, though you will get um, catered for during the day, obviously, whilst you're at our workshop. First time people can come back to our workshop after uh, lockdown for uh, this um for this masterclass with Joan Prowse. And we are planning on a Zoom meeting with her where you can ask her lots of questions um, because she's been sort of hiding away a little bit as an artist, even though she is um, a wonderfully talented um, artist. And I have actually got the lion here. So I will just, um, whoops, Robin's just falling over. I will just show the lion to you in real as well. This is the standing lion. I haven't got the lying down lion. Um, but here is the lion. There you go. So it is, it is really stunning. So if you're interested, info at themakers.co.uk, masterclass lion, if you want to um, call it that, or lion masterclass, whichever way around, get in touch, ask any more questions if you want to, or let us know if you're interested in meeting Joan via Zoom to start with, um, to see if this is for you or not. Okay, right, Lion's going back in his cage. And I am going to continue with the little gnome. Um, remember, pop into the comments um, your favorite holiday experience for a chance to win £15 voucher. And this is also, uh, you can win, win the same, not the same voucher, but the same price is up for grabs again on Thursday, the 28th of July, over on our Facebook uh, page, The Makers. Right, I'm going to um, continue on making the little gnome. Now, this is the bit I love the most, adding curls. I've, I've grabbed a handful of curls of the Blue Face Lester curls that we actually sell. These are more sort of gray, and then I've got some darker brown, almost black curls here. Um, I think I'm gonna do <clears throat> a brown version. So you don't need terribly many curls. The main thing is that with curls, you don't you don't uh, pull them if they don't come apart easily, like this, for example. Don't pull them, but cut the bits that are holding them um, together um, because you don't want to pull these beautiful curls into a frizz. So um, make sure that you don't pull curls, but that you actually find a way of, of, of sorting them out by cutting them. And it's always good to have sort of a few strands at the ready and um, uh, if they're terribly long, you can cut them shorter, but you might also be able to fold them in half and use them that way. So it's a good idea to, to definitely organize the curves rather than just sort of going ahead and felting them on any old way. So if you've got a long batch, then fold it in half, and then you're going to start felting these on to his um, face for beard. That's the first thing you're going to do. Remember, he's going to have a little red hat, so you don't, in theory, need to cover all of his head, but you can, of course, cover um, and give him a, a fringe. But he, he could be sort of like a little bit of a bald, a bald gnome. That's the right way of saying it, isn't it? So you're going around the lower part of his face and then sort of slightly up on the side where you imagine the ears to be. And... Um, if you want to, you can tease these curls a little bit so that they become a bit more um, voluminous. You can do that too. There you go. And assess if he needs a little bit more in a particular place added. Yeah. He's got very dark curls. And then give him some curls on for fringe if you want to but these are all really stuck together now there's some here you can use but with these i'm definitely going to cut them now do 
he's done out of it. I don't want to cover his whole face, so I'm just giving him um, a little bit of a cover here at the top. Remember, most of the head will be covered with a with a hat, so that's why I'm doing it um, in this strange way. So he hasn't got anything at the back here at the moment. You can have um, hair hanging out at the back if you want, so we can do that too. So I've just got a little bold patch then. So in effect, I've actually just framed his whole face now. Almost. Might as well have held them down there. Or you can give him a full head of curls if it bothers you. I'm just trying to save you curls. And cut a couple more here on this side. And then if you want to give him some curls so that he has got a bit of hair hanging out on the back, again, don't need to cover all of it. I'm just going to cut, cut these off now. Here's a tip. If you're trying to felt on curls and they don't they don't want to stick, which can happen, just open them up a bit so that your um, needle has got more of a chance to grip the fibers. Because if the fibers are so close together, um, they they might not, um, yeah, they they might just not grip grip the wool. Um, I have seen people gluing them on. That's another option, of course. Again, nothing's forbidden in the world of craft, so um, you can do whatever you like, whatever whatever you can do that doesn't cause you stress and um, and hassle, just go for it. But this is a way of fastening them on. So at the moment it looks like that is his front, but it's not. That is his front. He's got a, um, I'm going to leave that bald patch there. But as I say, if it bothers you, you must put um, curls all over his head if you can't sleep at night. So he now looks like he's um, a hatchless gnome, basically. That's what he looks like with a bald patch on his, the back of his head. And um, I'm going to, what else can I tell you? Let's have a look. Oh yes, we've got upcoming live streams. Let's have a look. So the next live stream is actually the sub boxes unwrapped. And of course we've got the large tiger moth on, on canvas. And um, then we have got the fairy circle fairies. And we have got um, the, oh gosh, what is the, uh, busy bees. That's right, busy bees for the uh, surprise box. And then we've got the sea turtle on the 19th of August. For this, we have a kit. So get your kit now in time for the live stream. And then, of course, if you're a fairy subscriber, we make the fairy circle fairies together. This box makes actually um, six in total. I don't think I'll be making six fairies in the hour, but I will definitely make one. And um, so get ready for that. Right, I'm going to um, show you now how to um, make the hat. And we use for this, we use the um, this lovely um, red variegated wool. There. The measurements, measurements it tells you in the book, so get, make sure you get the book. If you buy it from us, you get a signed copy. Um, if you are buying it, I would love for you to leave a review on Amazon, whether you bought it from them or not. Um, because Amazon uh, reviews get, get, give the book Google ranking. So please do um, leave a review for us on Amazon about the book, wherever you have bought it. Uh, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to have a verified purchase from there to leave a review. So now you're going to draw the outside of a, of a hat onto here. And um, you, you make a, um, a little shape. I've already sort of shaped it into a triangle, but it's about eight centi eight by eight centimeters. And um, you lay it on your felting mat and draw the outline of a tri triangle with a curved base. So that looks like this. Go up and down. That's the straight sides of the triangle, right? You can see that quite clearly. And then you're making a curved shape underneath. So it's like a a little semicircle at the bottom. So triangle, straight, and then curved. And now you're going to fold in 
the wool outside that line that you have felt it. And felt it down. I'm not felting it massively down right now because um, if you're felting it down a lot, you're actually fastening it to your felting mat. And um, so I'm just getting it into the shape I want it to be in right now. And now I'm going to lift it off gently. And now I'm going to work from both sides. If you've got a multi-tool, such as um, a three needle felting tool, you can use it. I don't think I've got my clover tool here at the moment. No. Oh yes, I have. The uh, five needle tool works really well as well. Felt, oh gosh, it's covered in Angelina fiber. Sparkling gnome. This will help speed up the work. But you still have to lift it. Work from both sides. Trying to maintain that shape. It's best to felt the inners down really, really, really well. Don't worry too much about the sides because what will happen next is that you're going to fold this in half now because we want it to be 3D. At the moment, it's just 2D. And um, we want this to be now folded in half. Just smooth this down a bit. There. And you need to make sure that it fits your gnome. So if you have to tease it open a little bit, do that. It's the base that I'm mostly worried about. Oh, no, that's not the front there. Does it fit your gnome? If not, so if it doesn't fit your gnome, my gnome's head is slightly bigger, then just extend. This is not in the book. This is, a, this is just a tip here amongst friends. Extend. It's the rounded bit that you need to extend. So just add a little bit to it. I've just folded a bit of wool in half and extended it to that side. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Set it down. Make it part of the hat. So again, nothing can't be rescued. Or to put it in a better way, everything can be rescued. So never give up, never, never give up, um, because there's always somehow a way to put it right. Let's see how well it is. Yeah, I think that 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 does the job now. So what you're doing now is you're putting the two straight edges on top of each other and you're felting into the very, very edge of both of them at the same time so that they are fusing together. You have to do this from both sides. And... Then you can also neaten out the shape at the top now. Make it a little bit. The, the main thing is that the base stays open um, for to fit the gnome. It's now it's now fused together. So what you need to do now is you just need to flatten that seam a bit by felting into it. Um, if you're putting your finger inside, make sure you don't stub into it does happen and also make sure that you in felting the seam flat you're not opening the seam up again and um, and then um, put the hat on the gnome so it covers all the major parts that you want covering and just tuck it on so just give it a few steps um, so that the the hat stays on and now you can felt it on properly so make sure the seam is at the back that's the idea Seam is at the back. Felt it on. And all around. I'm not felting straight into the edge of the hat because I don't want to make it look like it's um, literally part of the gnome. I want it to be a separate 
um, entity. So to maintain that neat edge, I find the gap right between the norm and the hat and I step into exactly that precise space in between. So you are felting the hat on, but you're not making it one. Not like we want, um, like we wanted the nose to become one with a norm. You do want there to be a difference, and you can actually crumple up this hat a little bit so it doesn't have to stick out straight by just felting all around. I just noticed that the little norm that I've got here has got a different coloured hat. He's got a the um, the um, variegated um, orange. So I've used a different colour on this one. And that is your little norm. So I'm 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 crumpling up the hat to make it that shape so you can just scrunch it up and then felt it into, into it as you're holding it scrunched up and it will just uh, put the fibers into that position where you want it to go. And there's your little norm. With, um, with this little hat. Just be very, very precise with the tip of the hat, so make it nice and, nice and um, um, what's the word, smooth the fibers out. This is quite a coarse fiber, so it's not, never gonna be that smooth. And uh, make sure the hat doesn't come off. A little bit more stabbing and your all done yay got a gnome with um, um a lovely beard and then one of the things that i do is i really like uh, blushing um the 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 gnome's cheeks in um by using a little bit of cheeks and the nose he has a bit of a a red nose just give him a little bit of color in his face maybe he's got a very red nose maybe he's very cold outside we wish. Yeah. There you go. It's got a little a little rosy face. And um, he's all done now. And that concludes the making of the gnome. You can pose his arms, of course, however you want him to um to be. And that's the little gnome who can now join his friends. All of them. A whole row of gnomes, all different, because that's the nature of needle felting always to everything always turns out differently and I think I uh, will just tell you what happens um, next week uh, did I tell you that already no I did tell you that already I wanted to tell you what else do you want oh yes exciting news I'm going uh, live with um, a zoom workshop um, I apologize now to um, Alicia that I used this thumbnail but um, that's the one that, um, and I, I couldn't make it fit the screen. So ap apologies um, to that. I was a bit in a rush. Um, this is the 30th of August, two hours from 6.30 until 8.30. And on the 6th of September from 6.30 until 8.30, same time. This is British summer time. You can make this life-size puffin along with me, um, step by step, with our... Um, with our puffin pack and you get sent that puffin pa pack as a as a free gift as well as a toolkit all you need to pay for is your um, postage internationally if you're in the UK it will be free anyway because it's over 40 pounds and uh, it's all on our website now for you to book so don't uh, delay just come and join me and make this puffin and get um, expert one-to-one -one almost um, tuition. I nearly said intuition. You get my intuition as well. And um, that's all I've got for you today. Um, yeah, just give us the thumbs up, like our um, like our Facebook page. Why not? Have you done that recently? Follow us on Facebook as well and join our Everyone a Maker Facebook group. And uh, well done for those of you who have won the £15 voucher. See you soon. Bye.